So you want to know the best mobility training hacks. Well, today we're going to talk about how to avoid plateaus. There's one key principle that we're going to be nailing today, which if you get wrong, will completely stifle your progress with mobility and flexibility training. But get this right, and literally the sky is the limit. We're going to be talking about all that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hello everyone, in case we haven't met, my name is Rad Burmeister and this is my brother Yanni Burmeister and we are the co-founders of Unity Gym and the co-creators of the Foundation Movement System where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. You. And today we have got a cracker of a show for you. Mobility and flexibility is by far the topic that seems to get the greatest level of interest from what we put out and we've got some really good stuff to teach you today. Get this right. These are principles. Now you might know this stretch and that stretch and this stretch and that stretch, but these are principles that if you don't understand, you are not going to get better. And if you can relate to this feeling of no matter how much stretch stretching you do, that you just never get more flexible, then this is for you. So stay tuned because I am going to drop some gold nuggets on your lap right now. How you doing, Yanni? Mate, I'm doing really good. That was a fucking big intro. Uh, fucking know if it was. We're pretty psyched. Um, mobility training <laughs> is something that we've invested a lot of our time and effort in learning. So uh, it's something that we're really, really working on. And, and uh, as a side note, anyone who's out there who's, um, who's purchased our 18 minute stretch routine or our mobility masterclass, we are revamping those two um, because we're, we're doing more and more study as we do. And we like to re-release things when we learn something that we could definitely uh, give more value no, we're, at, we're, we're so. adding more content to it. We, we're going to do that to all of our courses. So, yeah, constantly. Um, constantly. So stick around, yeah, look out for it, and uh, get ready for version 2.0 of the 18 minute stretch routine and the mobility masterclass. Very excited about that. So what are we talking about today, Rad? Well, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the difference between flexibility and mobility. And this is something that is really, really misunderstood. We use, we call things mobility more than flexibility because in all honesty, it, when people think of flexibility, they just think of stretching. And when people think of mobility, they think of things that they haven't really learned before. And that resonates better with what we're trying to teach because what we are teaching is things that most people haven't learned before. Um, I'm 41, Yanni's 39. If you've seen anything of, uh, of us stretching or, or in our routines, we have achieved a higher level of flexibility and mobility than most people do in a lifetime. And that all came in the last probably about four years, right? Um, yeah. It was only about four or five years ago that I could barely touch my toes and I couldn't come anywhere close to the splits. And now I can do well beyond uh, both of those things. So what I want to talk about is the difference between flexibility and mobility. This is really misunderstood. Flexibility is the act of trying to lengthen your muscles so that you can increase your joints range of motion. So. If your joint wants to be mobile, if you want to move your joint, let's say the hip joint, it's going to be limited. The movement that you can create is going to be limited to the tightness of the muscles. So as your joint tries to move, if the muscles are tight, it prevents the joint from moving. So flexibility is the act of trying to lengthen the muscles. Mobility, on the other hand, is an umbrella term that refers to taking the joint through its already achieved range of motion. So it's really, really important to understand the difference between the two. Now, flexibility training has a lot of different things that you do in it, and they're all designed to increase the length of the muscles. So what happens when you do flexibility training, and, and some examples of flexibility training are static stretching, which is the, the old school, just bend forward and touch your toes. Um, at loaded mobility, which would be, uh, so static stretching is where the muscles are completely relaxed and you take them to their end range. Uh, loaded mobility, which would be doing the same thing but under load. So in this case, you could do a single leg good morning where you have a weight on your back or, or wherever it is um, so that when you go down into that position and the hamstring is being lengthened, the hamstring is also tight. Yeah. So the muscles are under load. Um, or another one would be end range strength where you're going to your full range of motion and then you're strengthening antagonist uh, muscles, so opposing muscle groups, um, and they all would—they all come under flexibility training because you're trying to improve your flexibility. 
Mobility, on the other hand, is just taking the joint through its range of motion, either passively or actively. So an example of passive mobility would be that if, I, if my ankle was relaxed and I grabbed it with my hand and rotated it around, that's passive mobility training. Whereas if I went like this, and turned my foot around, that becomes active mobility, okay? I hope you guys heard the level of fucking crack that just occurred there. That was like, pow. It sounded like someone cracked a whip. Yeah, I get some good cracks in my ankles. My goodness. Okay, so let's talk about the difference then between pain and discomfort when, when training for flexibility and training for mobility. Yeah, so those are, this is a really important thing because this is, this is really the big thing that, we, that Yanni was saying, the big idea that we're going to talk about today. This is why people get it so wrong and why people say that they stretch, stretch, stretch every day and they don't get anywhere. So what happens when you stretch is you, you take your muscle fibers to their full range of motion and the muscle spindles sense that the fiber is going, it, it can't go any further and it sends a signal back to the brain through the central nervous system. The brain sends a signal back to tighten up the muscle fiber as a defense mechanism to prevent you from injuring yourself. So that's what happens. That's what you experience when you go down. Now, what happens when you stretch is through, sorry, when you do flexibility training. So all this different type yeah. of training that we've spoken about. And, and we only gave three examples. We use so many different methods of flexibility training. So when you do flexibility training, what you're actually doing is desensitizing the muscle spindles to that length of motion so that the next time you stretch, the, the reflex comes in at a later date. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's really important to understand that when you experience pain, Pain actually decreases the muscle spindle's ability to desensitize. So when you experience pain, you stretch and you go, ah, 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 you decrease your muscle spindle's ability to allow it to, to kick in at a later stage, which means that when you come back for your next stretching session, you're going to be able to go only to the same range of motion, sometimes even less. I'm sure a lot of people have experienced where they do a stretching session and then they say, man, I came back the next day and I was tighter. I couldn't even get that far. It's because you went too far and you experienced so, pain. So in, in other words, pushing so hard that you feel pain, physical pain is a, a, a regression. It, it actually prevents progress. It's probably the worst thing that you can do when you stretch. And this is what it, it, it comes from, I think it comes from, it clearly it comes from a lack of understanding. So being a novice at stretching, you don't understand what you're doing. But I think it also comes from people's um, desire to achieve results quickly and not understanding the process that's required. Also, I guess it'd be an element that when you train for strength improvements or muscular hypertrophy, it's quite the contrary. You're trying to stress the body yeah. and force an adaptation. Yeah. So they're two very different yeah. results and very different strategies. Yep. And people yep. um, would probably confuse the two quite, quite yeah. easily. Yeah. You know? And, that, and that's, that's one of the reasons <clears throat> why it's really important to warm up and why it's be the best time to do flexibility training is at the end of a strength training session or at the end of a workout or at least you know paired with your strength training set so that the nervous system is already fatigued and it's uh, and your body is warmed up and there's blood pumping through the muscles and it's easier to go to a longer range of uh, motion without experiencing pain yeah. but it is crucial that you understand this this difference that when you stretch the goal is to experience discomfort but not pain and if you experience pain, if you go far enough into pain, you actually cause micro tears in the muscle fibers. Yeah. And the muscle fibers are all laid, uh, interlaced with each other like this. And when you stretch, you stretch them apart. When you tear, you tear them apart like this. So they need to regrow. But then if you stretch again, you keep reopening the tear. Yeah. So if you go to that point where you've experienced tears, you actually can't stretch that same muscle group again for days or even weeks. Yeah. My worst muscle tears that I've had from stretching, I haven't been able to stretch again for the same muscle group for three or four weeks. Yeah. So it's very, very counterproductive. I, I've done the same thing. So um, if we quickly take a few steps back and talk about the concept that we were talking about yesterday, uh, which is progressive overload, the principle of progressive overload, surely that comes into play here with flexibility training because a lot of the loaded flexibility training that we do here um, uh, would probably not be suitable for most people. For, exist, for, for example, the loaded pancake. Mm -hmm. If you can't get to a, 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 a certain level of uh, flexibility or mobility there, um, surely um, pressing it too hard would be 
uh, counterproductive. Oh, so, man. So people should, you know, essentially just focus on the body positioning first, using their own um, body weight, using arms, maybe holding on to something in front of them to pull themselves into that upright position, mm. focus on being able to sit proud with the pelvis in that APT mm. position first yep. um, before worrying about overloading and things like that. And then using that progressive overload principle. Uh, I mean, great question and great concept because absolutely, if you, the, the, the key phrase that you've used there, Yanni, of course, is progressive overload. You can't just go in and grab a weight when your body's not ready for it and expect to get a good result from that. It has to be progressive. And so for somebody doing a loaded pancake to start with, you know, we would get them um, to use no more than a, a five kilo or a 10 pound weight, which yep. is very, very light. It feels like nothing. And you progressively increase that. And what you've got to think of is when you're doing loaded mobility like what you just described or, or loaded flexibility work you are not just lengthening the muscle fibers but you're thickening them so you are creating a hypertrophic response yep. and that comes just like weightlifting it comes from progressive overload it doesn't come from just pushing yourself yeah, in like one abusive. session yeah abusive load like we exactly spoke about, spoke yeah. about yesterday so then the next thing that we want to talk about is mobility at the end of flexibility so explain what that means so what that means is that the idea of flexibility training is to create a new range of motion and if you do it properly if you stretch your hamstrings or do uh, flexibility work on your hamstrings for several days in a row after the you know the fifth day or so you are going to have a new range of motion or even if you do it properly you'll get a little bit of a new range of motion on each day yep. so the idea of doing mobility work at the end of that is to solidify to teach the nervous system that this new range of motion is accessible and it is safe Yep. So what I mean, by, so you, 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 you stretch or you do your loaded mobility or your end range strength, all of a sudden your hamstrings are more flexible, you can go further. So now you want to do some active mobility in the hip joint to teach the body how to do that. And something that we're going to be adding to the mobility masterclass very soon, I think we might even film it today, hopefully it might be up by the end of the week, um, is something called controlled articular rotations. So it's where you take every joint in the body through a controlled um, articular rotation, it's, it's a literal description of what you're doing, yep. um, to strengthen, to, to actively take the joint through its full range of motion. Other ways to do it, something that if anybody's got the 18 minute stretching routine that you'll be able to relate to, another way is with the 360 hip mobility for the hip joint, yep. that's a really good one. Or in the loaded mobility routine where we do those um, shoulder circles laying down on the ground in the loaded mobility routine, or the scapula circles like that, they're all examples of uh, active mobility. Rotation. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's right. So, and when you do that at the end of your flexibility session, it really helps to solidify the the new range of motion that you've got. Yeah. So, just very quickly, when Rad talks about controlled articular rotation, um, if you're unsure what that refers to, when he's demonstrating a, um, a, a shoulder circle, the humerus and the arm is articulating on the spine or the torso. So it really just means that one joint is remaining stationary and one um, limb or, or part of the body is articulating in relation to that area yeah, of yeah. the body. And look, if anybody wants to get out there, because you, you always get these comments on these videos, people always say, why didn't you credit the person that created it? Um, it's uh, created by a guy named Dr. Andreas Spina, who um, is the creator, he, I'm pretty sure he's a chiropractor and is the creator of a system called um, FRC, Functional Range Control, and it's amazing. It's been an amazing um, leap forward for us, but it's funny, I always find it funny when people ask you to credit people, because I mean, everything that we've learned is learned from somebody else, and if we went, crediting everybody, then you, you, you wouldn't you'd be here you'd for just be here forever yeah. <laughs> crediting but, but the point is that not, very, few, very little is new. It's just been packaged and, and uh, marketed as a, as a new system. Yep. You know? yep. Our foundation movement system, there's nothing new in there. We've been learning stuff for the last 22 years and uh, we just pick the stuff we really like and had got good results from and package that mm -hmm. in the foundation movement system. Yep. You yep. Know? Um, and the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about how to, you know, um, how to avoid plateaus is 
So once you understand this idea of training for, to discomfort, not to pain, and using um, mobility and the, what the difference between flexibility and mobility is, and then using mobility at the end of your flexibility training, also for warm-ups, we prefer mobility training for warm-ups um, because that's what you want to do in a warm-up. You just want to take the joint through its full range of motion. You're not The goal of a warm-up is not to try to create a new range of motion. It's just to access yeah. the range of motion that you've already got and prepare the joints and the muscles uh, and the cardiovascular system for, and the central nervous system for the workout to come. Yeah. Mobility is far superior for that than flexibility training. The last thing that you want to understand is daily training. It takes a lot of work to create a new habit and it takes even more work to teach the body to do something that it's never been able to do before. So if you've never been a flexible person and you approach stretching and mobility or flexibility and mobility training is something that you do when you feel like it, um, you're not going to get a great result. Strength training is very different. Strength training, you can program three days a week of very intelligent strength training. And for a beginner, you can get really great results from that. Flexibility and mobility training or flexibility training is not the same. You really need to be doing daily work. And um, I'll talk to you about three different options that you've got here. You could do flexibility training three days a week and mobility training every other day because what you want to do even on days that you aren't trying to increase your range of motion you want to be accessing the range of motion that you've worked for to make sure that the body doesn't forget how to use it so that's that's the easiest option um, and the 18 minute stretching routine that we um, that we sell to our uh, new members is designed specifically for that. It's a daily routine that you can do really, really easily. And if you're time poor and you want to just do it in the way that I do it in the follow along sequence, it, it literally takes 18 minutes. Yep. That's what we've got it down to. Um, most of our members um, like to take their time with it and do it in 30 or 35 minutes. And that's your prerogative. You, if you've got the time to do that, you can do it. But that's exactly what it's designed for. The next option would be to do flexibility training between four and six days a week and mobility training every other day, plus even potentially mobility training on the same days as well. And the last and most favorable option would be that you do flexibility and mobility training every day of the week. And how do you make this work? So obviously that's a lot of work for a lot of, a lot of people are looking at that and thinking, oh my God, how can I do that? Well, the first step is just to create a daily habit. And you create a daily habit with something simple that's a no brainer that you don't have to think about like the 18 minute stretching routine. The second thing to do is to, once you've created the daily habit, is to, is to figure out how you can get more work in. Now for some people that might mean splitting it up into two or three short sessions a day. So maybe the 18 minute stretching routine in the morning um, and a little bit of flexibility routine, um, training after their workout and then a tiny bit of mobility training before they go to bed. For others it'll mean a, a one really long session. It, yeah. th that's what they'll want to do. They'll want to do their warm up, then their strength training and then a really long flexibility session at the end of it. Um, so it all just depends on you and, and what you want to do. Yeah, I certainly find that the two and a half hour session, which we call our elite program here, is uh, is favourable for me because once I break away from my training, and we, we're about to go out and train now, 9.30 is our training time, uh, I just want to get in flow with my work, so that works for me, you know. But I know that like you guys like to break it up and do your flexibility later on in the day or... Whatever else, so it's really, I guess it's um, it's individual for people. We, you got to fit it into how your body works best, and and the way our energy system works, it usually works in ninety minute cycles anyway. So, you know, you might find that you can work really productively for ninety minutes throughout the day, and then you'd like to break away and do some physical training to get your body moving, recharge the batteries a bit, get back to your work, your job, your career. So it's all really, it, it comes down to what works for you. You know, mm -hmm. we like to sort of break our program, our foundation movements system into compartments we've got the warm-up compartment we've got the strength and flexibility training basics compartment we've got our conditioning compartment then we've got our skill compartment, skill compartment yep. our, ma our master classes for the calisthenics skills and then we've got our advanced elite uh, mobility training compartment that adds to that at the end and you sort of choose what, what you can fit in. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, and the last thing that I'll say is uh, on this idea of daily habits and daily training, the more you can do, the better. So if you can do mobility training, so um, flexibility training, now that you understand the, the, the basics of what flexibility training is, 
it, that is something that takes some dedicated effort. You need to dedicate a workout to flexibility training. It's, it's not really something that gets done in like five or 10 minutes or something. Mobility training, on the, on the other hand, it, it can be done in five or 10 minutes. Yeah. You can sit down at the bus stop and do the squat routine for five minutes and that's some mobility training right there. Yeah. You can stand up from your desk and do a little bit of spinal waves or, and do a few shoulder circles and some scapula circles like this and that's mobility training and you can do yeah. that and and doing that multiple times throughout the day so that you break up that prolonged sitting um, or even just prolonged being in the same position is really what it's about. That is going to have a dramatic effect over just doing one session a day or one session every other day or something yeah. like that. I'm a huge fan of like squat challenge. Challenge yourself with squatting. Uh, challenge yourself with hanging to open up the chest. Uh, and, and by challenge, I mean do it as many times as you can throughout the day, as soon as you see an opportunity. If I ever have to wait for public transport, I'm squatting on the floor. I don't yeah. sit on the benches. Uh, things like that are really good. Okay, bring it in for a landing. Um, we mentioned yesterday, I had a lot of people really excited about this in my daily emails. Uh, if you're not on the Rip list, the camera, not the sorry, computer. yeah, if you're not on the <laughs> list, you need to get yourself on the list to get invited because we are having a Christmas in July flash sale. It's going to include every one of our programs programs at 50% off. We can't give you dates yet, but it's happening in a couple of weeks within the next four weeks and it'll be available for only 72 hours. We had a lot of people and every time we do one of these flash sales, we have people really, really upset when we have the cutoff and we stick to the cutoff, but it's about integrity for us. If we say that you've got 72 hours, that's it. You're not going to get, you're not going to be able to email us afterwards and say, hey, listen, I missed this, da, da, da. You know, I had a guy email me last night who went on his honeymoon and he missed out and, and and he said, you know, when's the next time you'll be putting these things on sale? He's lucky because we're doing it this month. Yeah, and this is the first time that we've ever put all of our program. Normally we just do one program at a discounted rate, but this is whatever program you want, you can get it for 50% uh, off. For half price, that's yeah. right. Uh, our masterclass programs, not, yeah. not the FMS online coaching. That's right. Yeah. So guys, look out for that. And you need to be on our list to get the invite or you need to be a subscriber of YouTube to get the invite. So make sure that uh, you're one of those two. And until tomorrow, we will see you, well, until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Take see care, guys. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept <laughs> what you're gonna have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.